the one and only Diamond Rio in the studio. Woo! What's up, boys? Come on. Hey. hey. Good to see you all again. How are you? In this? We're good. <laughs> We're good. This is an uh, interesting time for you guys. You've got, uh, you're adding two, you've added two new members after what, 30, how many years? 30, well, two, I, mean, I believe it's 30, 32 it's been, years. Yeah. 32 years of Diamond Reel, but uh, Brian and Gene were with us since 86 and 87. Wow. So. wow. wow. A while. Yeah, a couple of times. We were just children. Yeah. <laughs> we're just talking about how many, the y'all's new, uh, what do you call it? What do you call this? It's a song. It's it's, it's a single. It's an instrument. <laughs> it's all instrumental. Yes. The whole thing is just, it's an instrumental it is. thing. Is this your six time you're doing, vocal, Jimmy? It vocal is. group of the year, six times, <laughs> and here's an instrumental. instrumental. Yeah, is this it. interview going to be this difficult the whole time? Yes, <laughs> of course it is. Is this difficult? Is this hard? Oh, because it's going to get way harder. Now. Hey, man, you know what? It's it. What what we did came about kind of organically. We've got uh, two guys, man, Brian and Gene, have been a pleasure to work with for forever. And, you know, they just... They got, I think they, they were ready to retire, so they yeah. took off. Yeah. And um, we slipped into Micah Swinesburg, our, uh, has been subbing for Brian for years, and is an incredible drummer. We met him when he was playing for Jason Crabb, and just a, a rock star of a drummer. And he's actually been a, a longtime a fan of the band. I think we've got some fan photos where he was like 10 years old or oh, something. That's no way. With us. Oh, that's yeah. weird. And, yeah. and it, That'll make you feel great. Uh, well, <laughs> well, you know what? It's, uh, and so he's I mean, he's a really super charming guy. It's interesting. You know, he's he's huge. He's like, I don't know, he's 6'5", maybe, yeah. maybe 260. And he presents like an 8-year-old at Christmas morning. Just, hey, man, just all yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah. So, but great drummer and very technical. So... Uh, Carson McKee came on with us as well. Uh, I think she started when she was 22. Uh, yes, I believe. Well, gigging with in us. College. Yeah, uh, we had we we Gene, uh, his wife was having some health health problems, so he got off the road, and uh, we were having a hard time getting guys to sing his part because man, Gene swings a big bat up there. Man, he's yeah. an amazing vocalist. So uh, we ended up replacing the guy with a girl, and Carson came along and just man. Phenomenal, type A personality. Reg graduated from the University of Kentucky, double major, 4.0, oh, uh, marketing and finance. Well, she's not going to last long. Yeah, and went went and started started <laughs> started playing tennis for Kentucky when she went there, and she was a state you know track yeah. runner and stuff. So anyway, highly driven, great, uh, and a virtuosic fiddle player. She was a contest fiddle player. So. Um, I've got these two young musicians, and I asked him, what would you like to do? And Mike was like, man, I would like to record something with you guys that Mike Clute, our longtime uh, co-producer and engineer, uh, records on you because he's got this great affection for Diamond Rio and the stuff. I was like, man, I think we can do that. And Carson was like, I want us to grow. So she and I just started writing a song, you know, and almost like it's li the Little Rascals or something, you know, uh, Little Timmy's mom needs a needs a tank for her iron lung. Well, let's all do this. <laughs> by one by one, Micah was like, "Hey, man, I want to play on this." And Dan was like, "Hey, give me a part of this." And then all of a sudden, it starts to become a recording. And Micah is also our drummer, is also the video director on this. He uh, brought his big rig. He does quite a bit, quite a few videos and and photo shoots when we're not on the road. If he's not playing sessions. Also, another really really busy guy. So um, he comes in, and so all of a sudden, the neighbors across the street have a cool garage. We got a song. We make the recording. We do the video. Now, we're not thinking that, the, you know, the world needs the next great country instrumental. <laughs> so, <laughs> that no. didn't crush but, your mind, yeah. But I've got these unbelievable musicians that are wanting to do something, and uh, we took that, uh, those Ferraris out for a test drive, and, man, they're incredible. And this is our first thing to cut with them. Wow. Just, yeah. Is this the first ever, like, instrumental that Diamond Reel's done? No way. No. no, no. We've, from the very, very first record, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, we've, 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 we've cut, I think, the Poultry Promenade. We cut Big. We cut the Rural Philharmonic. Maybe some other stuff. But Appalachian you know, Dream. You know, I've, yeah, Appalachian Dream. That's right. So... Man, you know, Grammy this, nominated. This this used to this used to be a, hist, a historical yeah. thing. You know, Ernest Tubb, the Texas Troubadours used mm -hmm. to do full albums of this. The the Strangers did full albums of this. And so, when I was learning to play guitar, those were the records that I played to try to learn what the country guys were doing. I was a bluegrass banjo player, and so this is a little bit of a, a nod 
to some of the oh, wow. some of the old and great that. stuff. Yeah. Well, it's uh, called the kick. It's Diamond Rio. Y'all want to hear it? Yeah. We got it on for you right now. We'll come back more with Diamond Rio, y'all. That is uh, Diamond Rio. It's called the kick. Man, that is catchy. I'll be doing that all day. I love it because, you know, I have this weird thing. Like, I can't remember the lyrics to any song anywhere. I mean, I have a hard time. I struggle. It's so one, you're good to go on yeah, this Yeah, this song is great. I, I, won't, I will never forget the words. That's right. Uh, I love the fact that it is kind of a, a, a nod, uh, Dana, to, like, old school, like, what country was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, you get back to, you know, as Jimmy was talking about, Haggard and the Strangers talk about Buck Owens with Buckaroo, man, what uh, what just classic stuff right there. That, yeah. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I think Buckaroo was the number one record back in mm-hmm. the '60s. But really, yeah. But that That's... just shows you how darn hot Buck was. <laughs> sure, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right, uh, Diamond Rio's with us. We'll uh, catch uh, up uh, more with the guys on the way next. Hang on. Diamond Rio in the studio with us, uh, Jimmy, Dana, and Marty as well. And um, so, w- what's the deal with uh, with you guys? I see you everywhere. If I feel like Diamond Rio is in all of my feeds, like every time I turn around, it's one of you <laughs> yahoos going, "Well, hey there, we're Diamond Rio." <laughs> <laughs> We yep. meet in the middle. And I'm like, yeah, we, we have a whole office that we, we actually pay them to make us do all that Man. stuff. And uh, they're the people sitting behind the glass right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we. Um, we are man. We still do business. We did ninety four shows last year. Wow. wow! And we we will do a little over eighty two or three. We're trying to rein it back a little bit, but. Um, but, I say, um, why? why people want us and be. I mean, tell you the the beauty of the internet and just the the difference in the industry now that we have. We literally have. 15, 16 year old boys and girls, whatever, sing every word of every song, not just the big hits. I mean, I'm like, and I go, I freak out. I go, and I will literally search them out after the show. If they're back by the bus, I'm like, how old are you? Uh-huh. 15. I'm like, uh huh. Said, I know every word to every song. I said, I know. You know them better than I do. I can't remember <laughs> them that is, well. <laughs> you know, there's this wonderful, the wonderful thing for like us. We love the nostalgia of '90s countries, 2000 country, whatever, whatever your era, your favorite thing is. But for the kids, all this is new. Absolutely. You know, like uh, I could put on Meet in the Middle, and my son will be like, "Oh, that's cool. It's a banger, Dad." And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, well, it's mm-hmm. it's awesome." So they're rediscovering all this as though it was new. The way that we were listening to like the Beatles or the Beach Boys or guess, uh, yeah. Buck Owens whenever we were kids. Unfortunately, or, they're also rediscovering the mullet. Uh, it goes yeah, that. They sure are. Kind of, I was like, man, that was a bad idea the first time it came around. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like the mullet. <laughs> well, we liked it for a nanosecond, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, for a while, yeah. 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 I always told on. my kids when they started making fun of them, the old pictures, I said, yeah, well, chicks dug it. That's right. <laughs> You're here, aren't you? That's right. Uh, all right, Diamond Rio with us. Uh, as we'll come back uh, more with Diamond Rio next. And D. Diamond Rio in the studio. Make sure you check out the uh, new release. Uh, it's called The Kick. Uh, and uh, it is uh, It's pretty sweet, man. It's one of those you just kind of tap along and there's no words. So you can you can sing along if you want. You can add words, I guess. That bass line is pretty incredible, it, isn't it? It is. If we yeah. could have just get got paid by the note on that one. Uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I debuted and played the duck call. You did? I did. Oh, did you get credit for that? Did you use it on there? I, the, I don't know. Uh Marty Rowe and the Duck Call. Well, I know that I tuned it. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Jimmy, Some things never change. <laughs> Jimmy, how many guitars do you own now? All of them. You All have, of I think them. you have every all I was. I've been at your house, and it's like you walk. It's, you still at the same place. You go down, and there's like all, Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and it's like uh, this room, and it's like they're everywhere. The Hall of Guitars? The, oh, no, it's a whole room. Do you have They're a hang up on every wall? Do you everywhere. have a guitar that uh, was played by somebody that you were like a huge fan of back in the day? And do you feel like the magic coming through or anything no. like that? Because I know a lot of guys. A lot of musicians, you know, like a drummer, they'll get a, a set that was played by somebody that they loved back in yeah, the day. And they're yeah, like, you so can feel a, it. A guitar came available for me of, of my big hero, Leon Rhodes. Leon passed. 
and Leon was the the great lead guitar player with Ernest Tubb and the Texas Troubadours that recorded those instrumental records with Buddy Charlton and Buddy Emmons on them. And Leo uh, Leon was a cow jazz player and was very, very much a part of my development. His guitar became available, but man, it was just out of reach. How much? Oh, really? <laughs> um, and you, you know who has it is the Malpas brothers. Is that how you say oh, yeah. the Malpas yeah. brothers? Malpas, yeah. um, I think it's Taylor Malpas, but the guitar player. Really? The, He's yeah, good. It's Leon Rhodes. He's got that that what? red thir- three thirty five says Leon Rhodes right on it with, I, wow. with no action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, Le- that, that guitar played itself for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, oh, we oh, we had a thing where there was a. Uh, um, uh, oh, help me out. Uh, the Stradivarius? No. Do you remember the, that? Somebody walked in here and they're playing fiddle and it was a Strad. They're like They're like, this is from 17, whatever. I'm like, holy crud. And he brought it <laughs> My here. word. Oh, yeah. I was thinking it was uh, Casey Kasem. Uh, after he passed, <coughs> they were auctioning off a lot of these items. And one of them was his Our, studio mic Mike. that no. he did all these, you know. We wanted that. And we couldn't afford that. How, what do you know? What it went for? I think it went for it was it was six figures. But it when we got on there, I was like, oh yeah, the bidding it started at fifty bucks, and I was like, yeah, we're in. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah. <laughs> and I kept checking. I'll it. double that. <laughs> I bet that didn't last long. No, yeah. we uh, we didn't get it. We don't have it. Uh, it's good to see you guys, man. Thanks so much. And you can check out Diamond Rio on uh, touring on the road. They are touring quite a bit. Uh, and uh, check that all out on their website, uh, DiamondRio.com, DiamondRio.com. And, of course, all these TikTok videos that pop up on <laughs> everything. I think you guys, I don't know how much money you spent because they're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere I look. Good. So money. Uh, m- we did pay 20- for that. I know you did. <laughs> Man. I checked. Closing price on the uh, Casey Kasem mic was twenty eight thousand eight hundred dollars. Oh, twenty eight thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty eight wow. grand. That's the same way though with you guys and all your guitars wow. and drums and basses and. Oh. Yeah. That's right. This was played by Jimmy Page. Five billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, check out uh, the new one. It's called The Kick from Diamond Rio. And like I said, DiamondRio.com. All right. Well, that was that was great. That was good. You did good. Thank you. I have you no were... idea what it was because yeah. this is taped afterwards. But mm-hmm. you were you amazing, sh- though. Thanks. Appreciate it.